In the previous section, we started working on migrating our services from AngularJS over to Angular. In this section, we're now going to work on migrating our components from AngularJS over to Angular. And, and, and through this process, we're gonna deal with just a number of different other issues, especially with a bunch of issues with how to deal with filters and also how to deal with a number of other third party uh, libraries that we may be using inside our components. So we're gonna deal with a whole bunch of issues in this section. Now, if you remember so far, what we've done is we've migrated the services. So we've migrated the contact service and the contact resource. We've had to downgrade the contact service so it can be used inside other AngularJS entities. And now we're gonna work on the search component. So we're actually going to migrate the search component up to Angular but then again, in order for the search component to be used inside other AngularJS entities, and remember, the root of the entire project is AngularJS. In order for it to be work inside that AngularJS root kind of entity, it also needs to be downgraded. So I'm gonna show you now how to downgrade a component, whereas previously, I only showed you how to downgrade a service or, or an injectable, as they call it. So to begin with, let's open up our search component here on the right-hand side. Does this zoom good? No, that zoom, this zoom is good. Okay, so I'm gonna close it out now. The first thing I'm going to create is I'm going to create something called a search. Well, I'm gonna call, create a component called a search component. And I'm actually gonna do that by extracting out this class here, this controller class. Yes, this is gonna form the basis of our component class above. So I'm gonna call it search component. So I'm give me an error for now, but let's ignore it. I wanna export this, okay? And then before I go any further, I'm just gonna start adding this over to my main NG module. Um, my, I've set up my VS Code to kind of give me live errors from, for, from, for Angular. So it's giving me errors that are really based on the fact that I haven't, I haven't already included it in my uh, NG module or my main NG module. Now, when creating these components, that need to work in both, well, in hybrid mode, so we need to work in both AngularJS and Angular, we need to add it to our declarations array. So if you know your Angular, you know you need to add your components to the declarations array. Let me grab the name of the component, which is called search component. We need to add that in here. But just for the process of migration, we also need to add it to something called the entry components property. So we actually need to add it to both. Okay, so all the components you're going to be creating that you need to downgrade, you need to add those to both the declarations and the entry components. Okay, so let me make sure I import them. So I'm going to port it above, it's going to complain about the path, let's not worry about that. Okay, so it's also giving me a couple of errors. I think I know what that is. If I go back into my search here, I've actually created well, I've got a name clash here, so I've got two. So for now, I'm just gonna call that A. Yep, so that hopefully should get rid of my errors there. Yep, so that's fine. So now I've added search component to both my declarations and entry components. That's very, very, very important that you add them to both. Again, you only need to add them to both when you're also going to be downgrading your component. If you're not downgrading it, you don't need to add it to entry components. Okay, so let's go back into our search component code. Let me close it out here. I'm gonna stay here for a while. And now let's start fleshing out our search component here. Now, when creating Angular components or components in Angular, we need to decorate classes with the component decorator. Let me actually zoom in a little bit here. Yeah, that's nicer. With the component decorator. Now, interestingly, the component decorator takes two properties, selector and template, and hey, Look, look what we've got here. We've got an object with two properties with selector and template. This was actually the reason, this is the reason I always recommend when componentifying an application to create one of these objects because actually then it's just a simple copy and paste to here, to here, to convert all of that code over to an Angular component. Isn't that cool? And we don't need the rest of this, so let's just get rid of it for now. Now we do need to import our components. Let's import it from core. There we go. And okay, the next thing we need to do is we need to deal with our contact service here. So we're now injecting this properly using the Angular 
uh, dependency injection framework. But remember, because of the way we're building in hybrid mode right now, the injectable or the automatic dependency injection isn't working, at least for me. So the best thing to do, just to make sure, is manually inject it in. So I'm going to manually inject it in with the inject decorator. So let's add that back to there. And then I'm actually also going to shortcut that to private contacts. And let's get rid of that. Now also because, and we actually don't need this as well. And we also need to now import in. So you can see now it's doing some nice type checking for us because we are running properly as in TypeScript Angular application. So let's import contact service at the top. Again, it's finding the wrong path. So let me just, oh, no, it's dot dot actually now. There we go. Okay, so that's looking pretty good so far. Now let's start dealing with our template itself. Now if you look at our template, we're still, well, it's still an Angular JS template. We're still using ng model, uh, ng change. I'm interesting using something called ng model options with a debounce parameter. Now I'm not going to go into what ng model options exactly is, but this is what gave us kind of a slight delay before executing the do search function. And there was a feature, we used it pretty pretty commonly, I hope we used it pretty commonly. I definitely used it a lot in my AngularJS applications. And there's no direct analogy for this in Angular. So we need to re-implement this using another, another method. Now the method I've chosen to implement this is by using RxJS with something called the debounce operator. Now that's really quite simple to do, to be honest with you, once you've done it once. Again, I've got instructions, I've got full details about forms in Angular on my website, codecraft.tv. There's a free course on Angular and we cover all of this in there. So I'm not gonna really go into too much detail about what the form is, I'm just gonna implement it. But we are, because we wanna use RxJS and we wanna use observables, we are going to have to use model forms, model driven forms in Angular, which means that the first thing we need to do is we need to create a model that will hold our form in our component at the bottom there. So let me format this nicely. In fact, let me format format the document just to clean it up a little bit. So the first thing, well, let's see, the first thing, the very first things we need to do is we need to start importing all the different uh, parts from Angular that we need. And we need to do two imports to begin with. So one of them is the form group and the form control. So these are the, the, the models for the model driven forms that we're going to be using. We also, because we're going to be used, start using forms, we also know, need to now go back into our ng module and we actually need to import the forms module and something called the reactive forms module, which gives us access to uh, observables on the form. Now, we need to import those in, so both of them come from the same package. But again, my VS Code right now is importing from the wrong place. So now those have been added in, it should be fine and we should be ready to go. Let me go this way. Yep, now we should be ready to go and start replacing this old AngularJS form template with a new model-driven form for Angular. Now with model-driven forms, what we actually need to do is we need to create a model which will hold our form logic and we're then going to link that model over to the template above. Now again, this is pretty standard Angular code that I'm gonna be showing you right now. I'm not gonna go into it in any real depth. You're expected to know Angular before you start migrating to Angular. So this we've created a, a property called my form. In fact, I need to create it as a protected property or a public property so I can access it from my template. And I'm then going to construct a form group object, I'm gonna pass into it a search, it's gonna be a form control, a sorting form control, and an ordering form control. Now the, the default for the sorting and the ordering is gonna be name and ascending relatively there. So now that's our model created, let me go above, and now, we, now we want to start linking in the template to our individual properties here of our form. So the first thing I need to do is I need to link the entire form to a form group. So we go back up to the top of our page and in this form tag here, I'm gonna add a directive, which is form group. I'm gonna say, look, listen, this form tag is going to use my model form, which is in my component underneath. And now we need to do is we need to start stripping out these old Angular JS directives and we need to now add a new one. And the one we need to add is form control is gonna link this import 
with the search form control in my form form group underneath. And then we need to do the same for the other ones here. So I'm going to add one here. And I'm also going to add one here. But that next one is called sorting. And I believe this one is called ordering. Let me just copy and paste to make sure that I don't get any stupid uh, spelling mistakes. Okay, so that looks pretty good. It looks like we've got the form as a modern model driven angular form. The search component looks pretty good. It's set up in our ng module. Now the final thing we need to do is actually to downgrade this. Now the syntax is pretty similar. If you remember from the previous section where we downgraded an a service, we use a function called a downgrade injectable. And we're going to do something similar here. We're going to use a function called downgrade component. But the bit that might be a bit tricky is a thing we're going to call an Angular module and we're going to create not a component, but a directive. Okay, so we're going to create a directive. Now again, a component is just a specific type of directive. So don't worry uh, too much about that. So it's going to be called search. That's the name of the tag. And we're going to pass in not the search component, we're going to call a function. We're going to call a function called downgrade component. Just going to pass an object. And one of the properties of the object is the component that we're going to downgrade, which is our search component. Now let's import that. And it's going to be from the Angular Upgrade Static Library. That's going to be at the top there. So let me go back to the top. And I think you know the way I like to structure my imports. I like to have my application imports at the very end and the Angular imports at the top. Again, because I like to format documents nicely. Let's just format this one. And now it looks pretty, pretty. Okay, so now it's been downgraded. It should work just fine. So let me let me do npm run build in this shell. And then I need to open up the other shells because they've closed out for some reason. So let's run the API server. And then let's run the web server here. So let's go back into my original shell. Yep, and that's built fine. So now let's go back into here. Let's refresh. Yep, it's all looking good. Things can work. But the one thing you should notice is that even though this is a thing we've basically uh, created with is with this uh, search component at the top, we've now upgraded this to Angular, but then downgraded it to AngularJS so it can still be used inside our application. But the important thing is we haven't actually hooked it up yet. Nothing's going to happen by clicking this stuff because we're not calling anything. Let's implement that functionality now. Now the reason I paused on implementing that functionality was just so well just so you could see just the simplicity of what I'm talking about. The next step is a little bit more complex. But that's because we're starting to deal with things like RxJS and that's not necessarily important for understanding how to downgrade a component. But again, we need to add that kind of nice debounce functionality in our application, the thing that replaced the ng model options. So to do that, we're going to use some RxJS. I'm just going to copy and paste some code. I'm going to copy and paste it to ng on init. So now I've added a nice observable chain from the value changes observable on my form. I'm going to go through this in a second. But we need to do, do a couple of things before we can use this. Now, if you hover over the debounce time, if you know from RxJS, we need to actually import each and every operator that we're going to use. I'm going to actually import some at the top. So just because we're using these, so we're, going to, we're going to be using the do, the debounce time, and this distinct until changed operator. So now, yep, those errors have gone. And actually, I had an, uh, another error here. So this is the contact service and now it's complaining that the sorting ordering and search properties are private and that's because I did I did set them as private uh, mistakenly previously and this is one of the, again the great features of TypeScript is it tells you about kind of warns you about features like this or issues like this in your as you're developing rather than when you're running your application so I'm going to fix this I'm going to control click to get to where it is I'm just going to change it to public so we have access to this externally Go back into my search component application, and that looks pretty good. Now, let me explain what just really briefly let me explain what this chain is doing. So, whenever you change anything in the form, anything in those forms, the, the search field or ordering or the email, 
it's going to, well, it's going to wait 400 milliseconds to see if you made any other change. So the, our goal is to only, if you somebody types AAA really, really quickly, we don't do three searches. We only want to do one search. So it waits 400 milliseconds to see if anything else has been changed. If nothing's been changed and it passes it to the next, distinct until changed, um, only passes stuff to the next item if um, there's been an actual change. So if you do AAA, delete, and then A again, it won't. Um, uh, pass it forward because essentially AAA, AAA is going to be passed through twice. We don't need to search AAA twice. Do is just a nice little debug thing. So it'll just print, it'll just basically pass the data into console log and print it out. And then we subscribe to the whole chain. We get the sorting, ordering, and search parameters. We set those on our contact service and then I just call do search on our contact service. So a nice little chain that we're doing here, which mirrors some of the functionality on ng model options and in fact it gives us a bit more functionality than ng model options so that looks pretty good let's build this okay now let me go into the application hit refresh and now we're looking good it's still functioning but hopefully yep yeah, now search is working which is really cool and in fact also yep yeah, the ordering works as well. So excellent, now we've basically migrated our search component at the top are over from AngularJS over to Angular and we dealt with a couple of different issues and specifically I showed you how we can downgrade a component from uh, Angular to AngularJS so we can still use it in an AngularJS context and I showed you how to deal with things like ng model options by using RxJS with an observable chain.